Hello and welcome to this week's vlog. Just thought I'd come down to the reptile house and have a little look to see if by any luck any of the tortoise eggs are hatching yet and I thought you might like to have a little look as well. So let's see if any started hatching. Just from having a little peep in without disturbing them too much. On the hatching just yet. Oh, we'll have to keep an eye on them and I'll let you know. I just realised I've been looking at those eggs, I didn't even think we've got a new member of the reptile house. Thought you might like to see. It's quite a young male bearded dragon. It's really super friendly already, it's so cute. I love bearded dragons, they're just so tame, aren't they? A lot of people say, oh, they're just such a common pe reptile pet. Um, I don't know, I know they don't really sit and do much, but I love them. I've got to think of a name. Comment down below if you can think of a good name. So, it's another day. My car is off being fixed. Um, I need it because we're going, I'm driving to Exmoor soon. And then, once Dad's back, I think we're going to go to Icarus. And we'll bring you along with us. hot today it's going to touch about 28 degrees so we're told and to be honest here in the UK it's been pretty naff <laughs> pretty naff and pretty cool and typical English summer for now for quite a few weeks a heat wave long gone we're going to give Wurzel here a, a quick spin around see if he's remembering his circuit training but it's not that windy we're going to head head to a tree line where there's usually some breeze because just like me, he doesn't want to do too much today. It's baking hot and there's no lift to help him. Let's see what he does. Come on. Brilliant. So we've waved him over. We're going to call him straight in now. Oh, he gets lost, remember, from last, last week's vlog. Trying to encourage him to stay on the wing. But remember, not get lost over those trees. The good thing was, <laughs> the good thing was, you're in the right place, there. <laughs> Start again. The good thing was, he did a circuit, and I thought, oh, here we go, he's gonna try and dummy me. He thinks he's done a circuit, he's gonna get his food. No, he took the signal. Oh, sorry, mate. He understood the signal of waving over. Go. And he flew on by, and that gave us the opportunity to call him back in when we want him to come in. This time I don't think it's going to work so well, he's getting tired, there's still no lift. No, it's okay, he's turned away, that's good news. We'll let him get some lift and we'll call him back in again. That's where he wants to be, that's where the only bit of breeze is today. Hitting those trees, he's got out of sight, this is where it all goes wrong normally. So we'll call him back. 
heard us, saw us straight away. This is a signal to get his attention. Obviously, you don't want it to land downwind, it hurts your face. Could all still go wrong. But he's, he's, definitely, he's definitely getting the hang of this. This is the best flying I've had from words, as in responsiveness now for weeks and weeks. This week is definitely clicked. Good bit of breeze here, let's go again. <laughs> when he's ready. You see he's panting. So remember birds of prey, they're not like us, they don't sweat. More like a dog and they have to pant to keep cool. They also pant when they're heavily stressed. Don't worry, he's not stressed. You can actually hear him. He doesn't want to be flapping those big wings, working those muscles, that's generating heat. And this guy is incredibly well insulated. So if he generates heat on the inside, he keeps it in there. And he can get too hot, so he's got to pant to cool down. When he gets tired, because he's still not fit, if he loses height, that's when he comes in on his own accord. A clear signal, my hands are open, there's no food to be had. He's lost height, he's tired, I don't want to land. Come on! Look at that, he's got a bit of height out there. Let's let him just enjoy that if we can. That's where he wants to be, look at that. Thrill of flying an eagle, wild and free, absolutely amazing. So, signal, signal, voice signal. It says, "Come on, your dinner's served," and he's enjoying it out there because there's some breeds to work with. And if you guys are vegans, he's not. <laughs> back over that tree line again, superb. You see he's panting. Mm -hmm. And this is all building fitness. You remember this guy's had a long rest through lockdown. Big muscles, going floppy and flaccid. We don't want to push him too far. He's learning. This guy is one of the most intelligent, most scaredy pants, one of the most intelligent birds I've ever worked with. He's learning the roll call. But look how much height he's losing. He's got, to, he's got to flap to get that lift and he's losing it. He knows the gap's there. Oh, and those wings are really aching. Come on. He's got to get up now and see us. He's got to get the lift for himself. His wings are really tired. Hey! Hopefully he's going to get some lift. Hey! This is where it normally goes wrong. Not very good conditions. Unfit eagle. He drops off the drop off over the trees. Hey! And he just hasn't got the energy to get back up without the wind lifting him up there. I can see him, he's low down, he's struggling. Hey! Oh, he's just made it over. Really poor conditions today if you're a soaring bird. He's coming in downwind, I'm gonna spin him around as he lands, like this. Just a bit of breeze. Give him a round of applause. He really deserved it, he's doing so hard. He's a man like bird. When he does it right, I can see the little cogs in his head turning. You can almost hear them turning when he's learning stuff. And it's fantastic to see just how intelligent some birds are. He's no crow, he's no parrot. But for bird of prey, this guy's got one heck of a brain on him. Let's clean your beak. That's it. So we don't want him to go again. So we're going to pop the hood on, carry him back hooded, and he won't be tempted to think, hang on, I want to do another one. Like that, like that. Because obviously that's what we want him to do. We don't want it to be negative where all of a sudden, no, you can't. So the hood means he can calm down. Out of sight, out of mind. He doesn't know where he is. He's not going to keep trying to take off on his way back. It'll also mean his breathing will calm and he'll get his breath back quicker because he's not trying to fly when we don't want him to. Today, what a fantastic animal he is. Words with the bald eagle. Hope you've enjoyed that update with him. We've got some snakes and all sorts to show you now. We just thought we'd show you guys our four longest snakes that we have. Now, firstly, we don't keep any giant snakes anymore. I realised long ago that going to school with a 10 or 15 foot Burmese python is absolutely ridiculous. And I'll tell you why. They weigh a ton. 
you need a reasonably sized transport box or something to take it there in. And when you go to schools, in fact, you know what? When you go anywhere to people that aren't snake keepers, a four foot long snake of any kind is just as thrilling, amazing, and as exciting as you lugging around a giant python. So our longy snakes, they're not giants, but this is a gorgeous North American bull snake. He's 10 years old. And bull snakes, pine snakes, gopher snakes, subspecies really of a similar kind of animal. And they're all absolutely gorgeous. Look how long this guy is here. Lower him down. He's a male. Look at this beautiful snake. If I lift him up, you kind of get some idea of the length of this snake. I'm nearly six foot tall. He's at level with the top of my head. He's certainly seven feet long for sure. Beautiful markings. And the bull snake is actually called a bull snake. It's got a modified windpipe. So whereas many snakes can hiss, bull snakes can hiss phenomenally loudly if they're threatening you or something to kind of say stay away. It sounds just like a bull snorting when it's getting ready to stampede and attack. So the bull snake, because of its super loud hissing noise, they've got a very characteristic characteristic rostral scale, a big pointy scale on the end of their nose. Excellent if you want to dig and push your way around. Beautiful patterns. If you look closely at the scales here, have a look here. These are what we call keeled scales. They've got a little keel on every scale. And it makes snakes that have keeled scales feel a little bit, a little bit rough. Now we said to you, we're gonna show you our four longest snakes. Turns out that was a fib because our black headed python is deep in shed. We're not gonna disturb him. This blue beauty snake is almost ready to shed his skin. His eyes are clearing. He's about one or two days away from sloughing or shedding his skin, but it's okay, he doesn't mind. Now, this is one of my favorites. It's a really arboreal snake. The snake that you just saw, the bull snake, it's a real ground dwelling kind of snake. This guy, Check out our other video about blue beauty snakes and you'll know they have a prehensile tail they want to use it to wrap around branches because these guys not just live in caves they'll live in trees in rainforests thailand vietnam china it's not a large snake like a giant python or boa it's just incredibly long it certainly lives up to its name of beauty snake, but it's very dull at the moment due to that being, due to being really about to slough or shed its skin. So check out our other video about beauty snakes to see how beautiful they are. This is a great snake for school education, talking about rainforests and adaptations to living in trees because of its amazing prehensile tail. personal favourite snake here at Raptor Exotics. This is my female false water cobra. Not just long, these are brutally strong snakes. And whilst they don't eat large prey like say a python would, they just catch, bludgeon their prey. They're rear fanged venomous for things like slippery prey like fish and frogs to help subdue them. But they've got strong jaws, amazingly strong bodies. They're not constrictors. They're just a brutish, strong animal that eats all kinds of animals that they can catch. She's just laid a clutch of eggs, so we're hoping for some beautiful baby false water cobras in a couple of months. Very, very inquisitive. One of the more intelligent, if a snake is intelligent, and lively and inquisitive species you can keep, false water cobras. Those that keep them all say there's no other snake like them. Fantastic. Look how long this snake is. Again, a long snake, but much more 
heavy bodied and muscular than the last two you saw. A false water cobra, she lives in swampland, water areas and in dry areas as well. They live on the Pantanal in South America. But they also flare up and spread a, the skin on their neck like a hood, just like the cobra does. They're not imitating a cobra. Cobras don't live where they live. But it's the same reason, a really good threat display. Makes them look big, powerful and threatening if you're about to eat them. Like most animals in captivity, they rarely show off their threat displays because if handled well and looked after, they don't tend to need to. She's absolutely gorgeous and she is without doubt my favourite individual snake. <gasps> Hope you enjoyed meeting our three longest snakes at Raptor Exotics. This girl's lively. She's beautiful. We love them all. And by the way, I do apologise. I put a new t-shirt on. Something pooed on it. It's my life. friend of mine, Martin, has popped in with one of his homebred falcons. Now Martin's been flying birds of prey and training them since before I was even born. He don't look bad really for that, but he's really old. Anyway, he's brought in one of his falcons. And hopefully, Martin, what is it? It's a lander falcon, a female lander falcon, 10 weeks old. We're just having some manning, get her used to people in other places. So, manning, it's quite a sexist word nowadays, it's getting a bird used to man and man's environment. Just take that as it is. We don't want any comments. You can call it peopling if you want to, but that's what it is. It's getting this bird used to its environment because this bird soon is going to be flying free and willingly coming back to Martin. And what he doesn't want to happen is something strange, a tractor, a dog, a car, a stranger, to spook the bird and frighten it. So before it's free, he's got to get it used to our environment. Why, Martin? <laughs> Martin, by the way, he loves the camera. Hi. <laughs> You've bred this. I remember 11 years ago, 10 years ago, buying a captive bred Lana Falcon from you. Why? Because I don't, I don't know if you can remember. I, when I started falconry as a teenager, all the birds have to be captive bred as they do now. Do you remember birds when you could buy them from the wild, from other countries or not? Yeah. Like lugger falcons and lanners. Yeah, a lot of a lot of birds used to be imported in in the early 70s, late. Late 60s, early 70s. So they'd be trapped in the wild. They'd be, you could buy them via either mail order or catalogue sort of thing, couldn't you? Yeah, and they'd, they'd get thing, exported yeah. here, wouldn't they? Yeah. So why have you bothered to breed it? Why don't you, if you want another bird of prey, just order one of these from Africa or Europe? Why Why do you care and why have you been breeding birds of prey for so long? Well, all the legislation changed and attitudes changed as well. And uh, I think it's just nice to be able to have a sustainable um, amount of own bred birds that are bred in domestication. Now we don't need to take birds from the wild anymore. So it basically takes total pressure off the wild population from a falconry point of view. Because falconers sometimes, places like the RSPB, bless them, not necessarily the man or the woman on the ground, but as a, as a body, they really still slate gamekeepers and falconers, don't they? And they kind no. of blame them for everything. And actually, it's just BS, isn't it? Yeah. Because if I want any bird of prey I can think of, more or less, someone like yourself is probably breeding them somewhere, aren't they? There's always, always somebody that's doing it now, yeah. And I mean, also, with uh, respect of the gamekeepers getting bad press and everything, I've known gamekeepers all my life now, and the, I've, I've been into wildlife of all sorts, birds, bees, whatever. And the best possible place you can go is to go on a good, well-managed shoe, or um, any, anywhere where game is, is looked after, and the benefits just roll on to everything else. It absolutely does, doesn't it? Yeah. Where we actually are now, this is a keeper estate where we actually live and work. And I can tell you now, if you want to find birds of prey, species and numbers in Northamptonshire, this is one of the hotspots and it's a keeper estate. So for sure, gamekeepers and falconers, we've had a bad press over the many years from when things were very, very different. If you go back a hundred years, if it had pointy bits, gamekeepers would have killed them. That was their job. They were paid to kill everything. 
that's in the olden days. Everything was different in the olden days. Nowadays, they realise good habitat management benefits their game birds and it benefits all species and we don't need to kill those birds of prey. And as folk as we don't need to climb trees and take them from the wild or import them from other countries anymore. This bird here, it isn't just bred by Martin, it's bred over generations of lion breeding to keep it really good genetics and pure stock. And if someone like the RSPB needed someone to rear an injured or, or a young wild bird of prey, I guarantee you now the people that have got those skills are yeah, they're falconers. Falconers and breeders, aren't they? And they're able to get them back into the wild without them having to run the gauntlet of probably not living because they're just left, uh, took out of a box after someone's thought they'd done a good job. Mm, repair its wing or something, yeah. and they've let it go and it's got it, no fitness at all, hasn't no, it? No, and it's not about that. You've got to make sure the bird's fit and healthy and actually hunting and catching for itself before it's released. Yeah, it's just having that specialist skill. And if, if you want someone to come and rewire your house, you definitely ask an electrician. If you want to know something about birds of prey, realistically, falconers, we're the experts, it's what we live and breathe. Look at this bird here. How old is it again? Remind us. Uh, she's 10 weeks. She's 10 weeks old. Yeah. And you can see how well the manning stage is going. She's absolutely chilled out, isn't she, Martin? She's looking around. Yeah, she's not she's, she's fixed getting, on me or scared of me. No, no, she's getting a lot better now. She was born in a seclusion ivory, which is a chamber where they, they never see anybody because you don't want them imprinting onto you. And it's like, it's more or less the same as taking up a wild falcon. It's as close Except as we can get, isn't it? Bread, yeah. 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 And it's, it's the same process, isn't it? As though it's wild, of getting it used to us and our environment yeah, when right. training yeah, begins. Yeah, it's bred by its parents. It's not hand reared, so it's got no no imprinting on anyone or mm. whatsoever. It knows what it is. Look at that. So it just watched a fly buzz around. If it was actually scared of us, it would be absolutely staring at us. It wouldn't budge its eyes off of us, would it? If no. It's so no. Last week she wouldn't have sat like this, but it doesn't take long if you take it gently and slowly. So just a week, and this bird is now gone from being probably scared of you to start with, thinking yeah, you're going to eat it. So, yeah, yeah. Look at that now. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. This is a female, so like most birds of prey, it's a little bit bigger than if it was a male, one of the males. This is what we use to settle them down to start with, the hood, and it's just popped on them very gently. and. It just calmed them down, and as the weeks go on, we take it off for longer, leave it off, and perhaps keep popping it on. So it's always used, it never really bothers with it until you're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until you're on camera. But uh, no, she's coming on well. So I've got to say, you're di di digressing there. One of my biggest bugbears in falconry is the amount of people now that are dabbling in falconry, taking up birds of prey to train them. That's great, that's what we did. But they just want the short route, the easy way in. And one of the biggest bugbears I have is most falconers in the UK don't understand what the hood is for, how to use it or why. It drives me mad. It's one of the biggest welfare tools that we can have in our arsenal to keep birds of prey healthy and well. Because right now, well, I had a little flurry, a little bit of nerves. This bird's not bothered. If the farmer came in here with his tractor and a trailer and we couldn't get out of the way. This bird could get quite terrified because he's never seen one yet. So what Martin could do is quickly hood the bird and it's out of sight, out of mind, and it's not worried. And Martin can step back and maybe take the hood off and let it watch the tractor from a distance to get it used to it. Without the hood, the bird's going to have a meltdown if it's terrified because Martin could maybe not get out of the way. So he's hooded again, the wind's blowing, have a look. And when the wind blows any young bird of prey, its instincts are to take to the air or open its wings and get a bit restless. How long before it can do that, Martin? Not long at all, I should imagine, with your training. Uh, she'll be flying in about a week or two. So another she'll week, very close to this bird will down. more than likely be up in the air, trusting Martin so implicitly that it'll see him as the easiest source of food and come back for some food when he calls it. Absolutely fantastic. Go through that stage now where they get that little awkward few yeah, days. Yeah. They have like teenage moments, don't they? Yeah, yeah. You can often think when you train a bird of prey, it's going really, really easily. It's actually because at the beginning it can be quite nervous and shy, but like when you get a new dog from maybe the dog shelter, you think this one's nice and friendly, and then you can find out they can be feistier than you think when they relax. But a typical falcon, look how long a lana falcon's wings are. The long pointed wings of a falcon 
and a really long tail on the Lana, which really helps out slightly slower speed maneuverability. Wow. We didn't know Martin was coming today, so what a privilege. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and turn on that little bell notification.